A day in the life of a middle ages woman could include working together with men in the fields, teaching their kids how to read, or even influencing politics at court, all while durable fashion trends and health and hygiene practices that we might find questionable today. Welcome on History Bazaar today, we're explaining a strange life of women in the Middle Ages. According to the Bible, Eve was created from Adam's rib, and having eaten the forbidden fruit, was responsible for man's removal from paradise. In medieval art, the responsibility of women for this original sin is often highlighted by giving a female head to the traitor who tempts Eve to disobey God. The story underlined the belief that women were inferior to men and that they were morally weaker and likely to tempt men into sin. During the Middle Ages, the place of women in society was often dictated by biblical texts. The literatures of the Apostle Paul, in particular, emphasized men's authority over women, forbidding women from education and instructing them to remain quiet. However, the Virgin Mary was a distinction to this negative image. As the mother of Christ, she was a channel through which Christians might be saved. She was sometimes described as the second Eve, as she was seen to have made up for Eve's sins. Throughout the Middle Ages, Mary was seen as the most powerful of all saints, as well as a strong model of chastity and motherhood. It was a popular fashion among high-ranking French and Flemish women in the 15th century to pluck hair from their forehead, giving the impression of a higher hairline, not something that's considered desirable these days. Christian women in the Middle Ages often wore a veil over their hair or attached to their hats. Medieval women often carried a purse attached by strings around the waist, since pockets did not exist in medieval clothing. The most common kind of outerwear for women was a garment called a mantle, basically an unhooded cape that could be made out of a variety of materials, including felted wool and fur. They were popular, especially in northern countries, for travel and keeping warm. The Middle Ages were somewhat dark times for the makeup world. In a society dominated by a strict church, makeup was often viewed as spiritually immoral, and applying makeup in any noticeable way was viewed as a direct insolence of church authority. But women faced a problem. They were expected to wear just the right amount of makeup to attract a husband. They say necessity is the mother of invention. Women during the Middle Ages were forced to get creative in order to toe the line between two contradictory expectations, which made for some interesting beauty tactics. For example, women used roots and berries mixed with fats to make medieval lipstick, taking care to not go overboard with the color. Light rose shades were generally accepted, as long as the resulting look remained innocent. Come to think of it, medieval mauve sounds like it could turn into a best-selling lipstick color nowadays. There were some women who exercised power, providing a challenge to the conventional image of medieval women as oppressed and subservient. In the church, women could hold positions of great responsibility as abysses of convents. In some instances, such as monasteries that housed communities of men and women, the abbess had seniority over monks. Outside monastic walls, women could wield a political power, especially as queens, and regents who exercised royal authority on behalf of absent husbands or underage sons. A number of powerful queens can be noted in English history, of whom one of the most remarkable was Queen Isabella, who brought about the end of the reign of her husband, Edward II. Yet however powerful some women were in the Middle Ages, it is important to remember that the overwhelming majority were not. Most women, even those in privileged circumstances, had little control over the direction their lives took. The marriages of young artistic women were usually arranged by their families, but here it is worth noting that their husbands, too, had little choice in their partners. Once widowed, such women had legal independence and in many instances 
autonomy over considerable financial resources. The two main alternatives for a medieval woman were to marry or to take the veil and become a nun. Almost all female orders required women to live behind the walls of a monastery or within an individual cell, living a life of contemplation, prayer, and work. Though the appeal of this way of life might be difficult to grasp today for a medieval woman, one of its attractions must have been freedom from the dangers of childbearing. Most women, however, were married, usually as teenagers. Afterwards, they were responsible for managing the household, whether this was a great castle or a small peasant hovel. Wealthy women had servants who assisted them with cooking, cleaning, and childcare, and so were left time to engage in other pursuits. Popular diversions for aristocratic women included religious activities, hunting, dancing, and playing games. There were no showers in the Middle Ages, but we know of bathtubs for wealthy households and buckets and brushes for the poorer. Because the water would have been cold or heated separately, bathing was not as common in the Middle Ages as today. Bathing was often saved for special occasions. Pregnancy and childbirth were risky in the Middle Ages, complications that today would be considered relatively minor, such as the breech position of the baby could be fatal for mother and child. The cesarean section, known since antiquity, was normally only performed if the mother was dead or dying, as it was inevitably fatal for her. Laboring women were attended by midwives, whose understanding of childbirth was most part attained through practical experience rather than formal training, though by the later Middle Ages, the profession began to be formally recognized. Midwives were responsible for performing emergency baptisms in instances where the infant's life was in danger, as well as caring for the mother. Most people in medieval Europe lived in small rural communities, making their living from the land. Peasant women had many domestic responsibilities, including caring for children, preparing food, and tending livestock. During the busiest times of the year, such as the harvest, women often joined their husbands in the field to bring in the crops. Women often participated in vital cottage industries, such as brewing, baking, and manufacturing textiles. The most common symbol of the peasant woman was the distaff, a tool used for spinning flax and wool. Eve is often shown with a distaff, illustrating her duty to perform manual labor after the fall from paradise. An image often seen in medieval art is a woman waving her distaff at a fox with a goose in its jaws. Sometimes, in satirical images, women are even shown attacking their husbands with a distaff or some other domestic implement. Rather than swapping secrets at the marketplace, on how to best emphasize and darken their lashes, some women just got rid of them altogether. Women in the 1400s wanted to have high foreheads and an egg-shaped face with small nose and lips. They saw this as resembling a child innocent and pure. It was truly a blank face, without much expression, since the hairline was tweezed to be very high and the eyebrows were shaved off. The eyes were the only color left on the face that was mostly pale and round. So if you asked for tips on what to do with your eyelashes, you'd get handed a pair of tweezers. However, if you no longer wanted to participate in the fashion, but your eyebrows grew back sparsely, it was in vogue to create fake brows out of rodent fur. They used mice or other furry animals in the rodent family to make small hair pieces for brows if the woman was tweezed and the hair did not grow back. This type of hair was replaced later on by human hair that came from the Orient. The lesson in this, make sure you know what you're doing with the tweezer. Thanks for watching History Bazaar. Please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this one.